woman, girl, you. Join me weekly for Girl Talk, which we will do a devotion together, talk about the word, and how to apply to our lives daily. As we dive deeper together, grow intimately together, we will begin to know Jesus more so our lives shine the gospel in such a way that other people will want to taste and see that it is good. If we succeed, we give thanks. If we fail, we seek his grace. And then when the day is done, we will place our head on the pillow and rest. Let's do it. Hi, welcome to Girl Talk Podcast. I am Teresa Warren Johnson. Good day to you. So good to be here and so good to share. And I want to take this opportunity today and and I I want to teach a little. Um, I am a a Bible teacher as well and teacher by trade for years and years of working in the teaching education. So I just wanted to, um, instead of sharing a devotion, I wanted to take this opportunity and, um, and teach a little bit. So let me pray us in and we'll begin. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for today. I thank you that you woke us up to see this beautiful day. So I just say hello, Lord, and thank you, Lord. We are so grateful for who you are and having you in our lives. As the as song said, I want to respond. I want to respond. And here we are, God, to respond to your word and to your truth, Lord. We thank you that you are the way, the truth, and the life, Lord. Bless this time together, Lord, and I pray that this teaching blesses someone. Use me as your glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. So today I wanted to talk about how to stay consistent in God's word, how to stay consistent in God's word. And if you wanted to get in God's word more consistently, literally, you have to make it your business. You have to make it your business, but the business of life makes things challenging. And every time you try, somehow you fall off. You fall short, you lose, you run out of time. So let's just talk about it. Do you have trouble staying consistently in God's word and making that time for God? Um, maybe you get busy, maybe it's not on your schedule. My tagline is 15 minutes a day. So let's just talk about it. Let's talk about how um, super it is important for us to stay consistent in God's word. I want to share a passage with you, and I have to share a passage. Um, That passage is Psalms 34, 1 through 3. And it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will praise him continuously with my mouth. My soul makes it boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name. And here I feel like, um, you know, David... um, the song is to uh, to God, and it's uncontainable. It's uncontainable. Uncont- Literally, you can't get it. Um, he has just been miraculously rescued, and here he is, like, God, I know. I know who you are, and I want to respond to who you are, and we can't do that. We can't respond if we don't know who, who he is. Um, how shall we respond, and when shall we respond? And that, I think, is the importance of knowing who God is and having that consistency of staying in his word um, and how I respond. And as Sturgeon, this is what Sturgeon said, and he's such a great, I think like a poet and his words are right. He says, at all times, in every situation, under every circumstance, before, in, and after trials, in bright days of gleam and dark days of fear, he will never be done praising uh, because never satisfied that he has ever done enough, always feeling that he fell short 
of what God deserves. So hear that we just know that his praise be ever on our lips and that we grow to know God more and more. And that is the importance of having um, that consistent time in God's word and seeing those things that happen when we're in God's words. And I'm going to share those too. So no, to bless the Lord is never unseasonable. I feel like it's in season and it's out of season and something that we do all the time. So let me share with you. Um, so just like um, our physical being, like we need water, we need food, we, we need those things. We're a mind, body, and soul. In therapy, we call it a biopsychosocial spiritual human being, and that's who we are. And we need God. He created us, so we need him. And so just like we need water and we need food, we need that spiritual nourishment that can only come from God who created us. And one of those ways, one of those ways that God provided fulfillment for us is through the word of God. So look at it that way. You can't go without food. You can't go without water. And as a spiritual human being, we can't go without the spiritual nourishment. So here are some ways that God's word will satisfy you. And I'm going to say fill you up. So when you open that word in 2 Timothy 3, 16, 7, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, it said that his words will teach us, it will correct us, and it will train us. And then in Psalms 119, 105, it says it will provide direction and guidance for us. And then we come to Romans, Romans 15 and 4, it gives us hope. And then that's full, man. That's like filling me up for the day. And then we go to Hebrews 4, and he's just brewing there. And it says, um, grant us wisdom and discernment, Hebrews 4 and 12. And then we drop down to 1 Peter. And here, 1 Peter 2 and 2, it helps us to mature spiritually. And we want to be mature spiritually. We want to grow with God. We want to grow in our faith. And there's so much more that is written in his word and, and um, all these benefits. We should be intentionally making time for God's word daily. Again, my tagline is 15 minutes. Start with 15 minutes a day. Well, you just plan it. I stop and I get my armor on before I go out into the battle. When we go out into battle, knowing that it teaches, it provides us direction and guidance. It gives us hope. It grants us wisdom and it grows us material, ma excuse me, maturely. We need those things. So this is an intentional. The Bible is not um, this little cute access for Christians. It is something that we desperately need every single day. It's not something that we come to every now and then. If you think about it, you eat your food. You always I'm not going to say we eat three meals a day, but you always have that one. So you always think about the word of God, that you always have your meal. Um, and however, let's think about it. So if I'm going to make these things work, how can I practically make God's word my daily bread every single day? Here's a few things. Make a plan to read the Bible. That means set your alarm clock early. If it is 15 minutes, make it. I like to joke about it. If you go to bed reading the Bible and you wake up in the morning, the Bible's right there. So you just start back where you left off. Because most of the time at night, after a long day, if you end with the word of God, you're going to fall asleep on it. He doesn't get mad. He might even help you have some sweet dreams, but the Bible's right there. But really, make the plan to get in the word. You have lots of Bible apps. You have lots of online ministries that offer Bible plans. Some of them are free. Some of them you can purchase. You have devotion with contents for a certain amount of days. You, It's right there. It's all laid out to make it very simple for you. So you can take this and use it to help you in having time with God. Okay? Then study smaller portions of God's word. Don't try like to just go grab the whole nugget. I'm going to be honest. There was a time when I took Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, where it says, me paraphrasing, trust in the Lord, lean not into your own understanding. I'll direct your path. I took that passage and I studied those two verses for about six or seven months of really, truly understanding what it meant. And, um, 
even though, yes, I know it's short, but it's more just like so deep to go in and look up words and sit with words. Ask God, well, how do they apply to your life? Look observations. How is God working in your life? And then praying those words back over yourself because he says that we can pray the words over ourselves. And that's the amazing part. But I just want to encourage you to find that message, take that time to pray and reflect on questions that keep coming to your mind of God's truth and what God is saying to you. Then number three is hide God's word in your heart. Hide God's word in your heart. And this I find so dear. Like I told you, I took a verse and I just meditate on it. It was crop pot experience, marinated on it for six or seven months. And then I can say that I can paraphrase it and I can apply it to my life. Taking time to meditate on scriptures help us in those seasons when we don't have time to sit down and read it. Or we can go back to our journal and look at it. Remember when we remember God's word in this way, it is already ready and it's in our heart and our mind. Even when we don't have the word, we can go to it immediately. I know that sounds kind of intimidating and there is like, um, how do I go memorize scriptures? Work with one for a while and, and marinate on it. Think about it, write it, write on an index card, place it in places that you know you'll see it, like in the bathroom mirror, the dashboard, in your car, in your purse as a, a bookmarker, every day that you see this memory verse, try to practice it and, and do it without the card, a great way to grow it. Also, number four, study God's word with a partner. There's nothing like accountability partner and we need them. Ask a friend to read or study the Bible with you. Set a time to read individually and then pick a time to go have coffee and or tea or dinner and chat about what you've read together. Study the Bible with a partner. It's also joy because now you're seeing what God is doing in their life as well as your life. And your partner may even glean from a different perspective that you got from the scripture and you will glean from that, making your study time more beneficial and fruitful. Number five, so important, is to listen to God's word. If reading seems daunting, then try this. You have Bible apps. Listening to God's word is so sweet. You can put it on on your way to work, your commute to work, as you're washing dishes. You can use it for exercising. Also, you can use podcasts. There are some amazing podcasts, just like Girl Talk, out there that you can listen to that will give you God's word. And when the people of Israel encountered God's word, it was often spoken to them. They heard it and they listened to God's word. There, there is power in hearing the word. And lucky for us and where we are in 2000, um, this time is that we have apps, we have technology, and we have Bible audio, and we can enjoy the benefits of listening to God's word. And then the next one is six. Write out or draw God's word out. If you want to get more involved in reading the word and studying his word, try journaling the Bible or writing scriptures out and drawing a picture. That is absolutely amazing, especially if you're creative. This is simply writing and drawing the scripture to help you remember it, help you meditate on it, help you learn it. It's also a very creative way to study the Bible and make it more exciting and fun. Each page of your life Bible journal, if that's what you want to call it, will come alive with the verses that you've done. And Bible verses that you're reading will come to mind. Writing the Word of God helps you slow down in reading the Bible, and it really takes you into what God is saying. It really takes you into what God is saying. And remember, we want to make sure that we read the message, not just a nugget. Here, we want to grow stronger in in the message and not a nugget. We're so quick to just grab something and go. We want to take it for ourselves. And it is much better thing if we pick up on the author's message, if we read the entire unit, sometimes you have to read the whole chapter or the whole passage to get the understanding. Look for the author's message, his main point, and you will gain a deeper insight in God's message and his word learning to apply them to your life. So I want to end with this. I want to end with this. Perseverance, and that is the big word in the end, is perseverance to have consistency. 
People just like losing weight and wanting to get in shape will not do so in a week. And that is the same thing with reading the Bible. Um, you have to keep doing something. You, you don't simply read the Bible and expect it to be easy. Persevere. Persevere when you're tired. Persevere when you don't feel like reading and it, you don't feel like it make a difference. Persevere when you're busy. Persevere because you trust that God will not allow his word to come back to him without accomplishing what he intended. Don't give up. Read your Bible consistently. Read your Bible consistently, and there is something that you can never regret in sitting down and reading your Bible. Every time if I've gone without, I'll go, man, my day was different. So make sure it is worth your perseverance. So if you want more, please reach out. You have my information, Girl Talk um, Ministries 2 at Gmail. You can reach me on Facebook, Instagram, right here. Go check me out at all different places. But if you want or are interested in... Um, any other Bible studies or a good book, topical book to read along with the Bible to grow you in faith, to mature you, please reach out. So I thank you and I pray that this helped you into uh, you being more consistent and having effective things to help you be consistent in reading your word. So thank you for joining me. Let me pray for you and that you have a blessed day and that you stay consistent in reading your word. Father God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you that your word is active and alive. And I thank you, Lord, that that we can come to it every time, Lord. And Lord, just as it said, Lord, that we will bless you at all times. We will praise you continuously with our mouth, that our souls may boast on you, Lord. And let us humbly hear and be glad in what your word has to say to us, Lord. And Lord, we just want to magnify your name. And let us exalt your name everywhere we go because we know who you are. We want to respond, Lord. So here we are responding to the word that we read. Lord, guide us. Give us strength. Give us the passion and the motives that you desire, Lord. I thank you for the plan that you have for us, Lord. And help my sisters be consistent in reading your word, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Girl, forget it. See you next time on Girl Talk.